This moment is never so poignant as that very first time, that first glide. Inevitably, the magic of this special moment diminishes with the passage of time. And in spite of our best efforts to replicate it, <laughs> it becomes buried very deeply under the burdensome efforts of, of avoiding at all costs <laughs> the requisites of a normal life, you know, real responsibilities, real relationships, real employment, real schedules, you know, so on and so on. <laughs> Until a surfer is faced with asking himself, why am I doing this? If he's unable to recall that first time, that first feeling, he may just quit and try another path. However, if he's one of the fortunate ones and he can still recapture that initial memory, he then advances his practice to a higher level. At this level, recognition and appreciation of these special moments become a much greater part of the experience. You know, our practice of yoga is generally not quite so simple in the beginning. Oftentimes it's our ego that takes that first step. We want our bodies to look beautiful, like our young yoga instructor. You know, we want our bodies to feel better because a friend told us, yeah, yoga cure a sore back or you know, tight hips and a hamstring or stressed out life. But ultimately yoga comes into our life when it's the right time to become part of our life. That's the way of it. And that's exactly how it's supposed to be. And like surfing, it can be a lot of hard work with little reward. And oftentimes what seems like no improvement. Surfing is 90% paddling. Which is just you know, gut busting work, hour upon hour, and all for this brief ride that's like only seconds long. Similarly, yoga too is class after class, where it seems like there's little or no progress, you know. And then there's that comparison to that person who hardly ever comes, and you know, they make it look so easy. And, like they're having fun. <laughs> you know, while we struggle. But this is life. There isn't anything easy about it. And if we believe in the concept of reincarnation, we do it over and over again, wondering why and for what purpose must we submit to this pain and suffering and fear of old age and death until we cross the path of yoga. For many of us, you know, we must crisscross this path many times because at first it only appears as like this very faint trail until finally we recognize it as a super highway that it really is. Denial and avoidance is human. <laughs> I mean, are we not often dragged, kicking and screaming by well-meaning parents, loved ones, or friends into what soon becomes some of our greatest joys in life? Ride that first wave, the real one, or any of the metaphorical ones, with your heart open. Just like we strive to experience each yoga practice and fly like a bird on the wings of the wind. You know, the lessons that come from surfing are extraordinary and ongoing. Right off the bat, one must learn to deal with being aware 
being present and being spontaneous. Paying attention is really key in a liquid world fraught with distractions. Actually, paying attention is key in any world, just more so in a liquid one where, you know, <laughs> any loss of focus or concentration, even for an instance, usually results in a wipeout. In the old days, before you know, they had surf leashes, um, that usually meant a long swim in after your board, and time to reflect on how you messed up. <laughs> but riding a wave is an absolutely spontaneous endeavor. And this is because each wave is very much like a snowflake, you know, uniquely individual, and always just a little bit different from any other. And of course, it's good to have a, a plan of action and clearly defined goal. They're always good to have in mind. It's been said we should know where we're going so we'll know if we get there. But in most cases, when we look back, once we're there, wherever there is, we realize that it was a journey that really held much more than the actual there.